Hello everyone. So in this short talk, we shall be discussing medial epicondyle fractures in children. So medial epicondyle fractures, uh, they are relatively rare injuries as compared to supracondylar and lateral humerus, uh, lateral condyle humerus fractures in children. They constitute about 10% of all pediatric elbow fractures. Another differentiating factor is these fractures mostly occur in the adolescent age group, unlike supracondylar and lateral condyle, which occur in the younger age group. Mechanism of injury, direct trauma is extremely rare. More commonly, it is an avulsion injury following a fall on the outstretched hand. It can also occur in association with dislocation of the elbow joint. So with this introduction, uh, we shall now look at the following points. Uh, we shall first look at the pitfalls in diagnosis, then assessment of fragment displacement. We shall study the results of conservative versus operative treatment, and then we shall see some surgical tips and tricks. So firstly, pitfalls in diagnosis. And diagnosis of medial epicondyle can be tricky in uh, two scenarios mainly. One is this dislocation occurring in association with the fracture medial epicondyle. And you can see that this is a elbow dislocation and there is a medial epicondyle fragment. The first step in management of such injury is obviously close reduction of the elbow dislocation, so which has been done. However, what happens is at times the fragment gets incarcerated into the joint. And if the surgeon is not vigilant, this can be missed. And if this is missed, the consequences can be quite significant. Like this child, he landed up with a severely stiff elbow and an alano palsy with a claw hand. The other scenario where, you know, medial epicondyle fractures can be tricky, uh, diagnosis can be tricky, is fracture occurring in the very young child, less than six to eight years old. So this is an x-ray of a child who is about five years old, and you can see there is a fragment. So this looks like a medial epicondyle fragment. But remember that in the very young child, medial epicondyle fra uh, fractures are extremely rare. So if you do an advanced imaging over here, you will see that the fracture fragment is actually much larger. It is a medial condyle fracture with intraarticular extension. And therefore, in this case, open reduction and anatomical fixation is absolutely mandatory. Then we come to the assessment of fragment displacement and the standard radiographic views that are obtained in medial epicondyle fra uh, fractures are the AP and lateral views. However, it has been shown that these views are inaccurate as far as assessment of fracture displacement goes. The reason for this is that in many cases of uh, fracture medial epicondyle, the displacement is in anterior direction. And therefore, in an AP view, we cannot see the displacement. On the lateral view, you cannot see the displacement because the fragment is uh, superimposed on the, uh, on the distal humerus. Therefore, in these cases, the CT scan gives the most accurate estimation of displacement of the fracture fragment. However, it is not necessary to obtain a CT scan in every case of a medial epicondyle fracture. There are some special views which can be done. So it has been shown that just like in the lateral condyle fracture, in medial epicondyle fractures as well, 45 degrees internal oblique view gives a fairly accurate assessment of a, a fracture displacement. Also, the humeral axial view has been described for uh, specifically for medial epicondyle fractures, and it gives an accurate assessment of fragment displacement. Next, let's study the results of conservative versus operative treatment. And there is quite some controversy over here. So if you look at the results of operative versus non-operative treatment, the bony union rate for operative treatment is 96%, whereas for non-operative treatment, it is only 28%. However, despite this, it has been shown that even if the fracture goes into a fibrous non-union, the functional outcomes are mostly good, both for the operative and non-operative uh, group, and therefore the controversy. It has been accepted that the only real absolute indication for open reduction and internal fixation of medial epicondyle fra uh, fracture is the fragment incarcerated in the joint. All other indications, including elbow dislocation with instability, displacement more than 5 mm, and fracture in the throwing or weight-bearing uh, limb in an athlete, are relative indications and should be applied on a case-to-case -case basis. So let's see some surgical tips and tricks if you uh, go for an open reduction and internal fixation. So uh, there is a group of surgeons who, who advocate a prone position for fixation of uh, medial epicondyle fractures. The reason for this, they say, is that in the supine position, you need to rotate the arm externally, which places a valgus stress on the elbow, and therefore reduction of the medial epicondyle fragment becomes difficult in that case. 
On the other hand, if you place the patient in the prone position, the arm needs to be rotated internally, which places virus stress on the elbow and reduction becomes much easier. There are studies which have uh, uh, which have compared the supine versus prone position for open reduction internal fixation of medial epicondyle fractures. And what they have found is though the positioning time in prone position is longer, the surgical time, in fact, is shorter. And in this survey, they found that no surgeon who had tried the prone position uh, went back to the supine position. However, in terms of the ultimate outcome, they showed that there is no difference in surgical outcomes and reduction quality. Some uh, uh, surgical steps. So the patient, uh, this is for the supine position, the, the standard position, which most of us are used to. So the patient is placed in the supine position with the arm on the side arm table. The shoulder is rotated externally to expose the medial aspect of the elbow. Medial incision is taken. Allah now is isolated. Now here, there are a few tips which you can uh, apply for in order to achieve reduction of the fracture. So you can apply an Eschmark bandage from uh, starting from the fingers upwards towards the elbow that squeezes the common flexor uh, uh, muscle mass and pushes the medial epicondyle fracture closer towards its fracture bed. Other reduction tips that can be applied, pronate the forearm and flex the wrist so that your common flexor origin is relaxed and reduction of the medial epicondyle becomes easier. You can use a dental pick to uh, hook the medial epicondyle fragment and pull it towards the fracture bed. Alternatively, you can do a superficial facial release of the common flexor origin. How do you fix the fracture? So there are various methods that have been described. Most commonly, uh, surgeons use a, a 4 mm uh, partially threaded cannulated cancellous screw over washer. Uh, this screw need not be bicortical. Unicortical screw gives good enough hold in the lateral pillar. Alternatively, you can use uh, divergent uh, K wires or even fixation with suture anchors has been described as shown in the X-ray on the right. Lastly, coming uh, uh, to the reduction of incarcerated medial epicondyle uh, uh, fragment within the elbow joint. So mostly, the this fragment is extracted from the joint by uh, an open reduction. However, recently, a J. Posner article had described a technique for close reduction of an incarcerated fragment. In this technique, the forearm is supinated, the wrist and fingers are extended, elbow is flexed to 45 degrees, and then the elbow is gently shaked back and forth in virus valgus direction in order to uh, extract the incarcerated fragment out of the joint. So to conclude, don't miss the diagnosis. Watch out for the incarcerated medial epicondyle fragment, especially in an adolescent with severe elbow trauma. Displacement is better assessed on internal oblique or humeral axial view. So these views should be obtained in addition to the standard AP and lateral views. Both non-operative and operative treatment give good functional results, though non-operative treatment has a higher incidence of bony non-union. And surgical management should be considered in overhead athletes or elbow dislocation or instability on a case-to-case -case basis. Thank you for your kind attention.